Welcome to my channel. And before I start, I'd appreciate if you give uh, us a subscribe and a thumbs up if you like this video. There are a lot of cryptocurrency projects out there, as you know. There's a lot of blockchain projects out there, as you may be aware. Not all of them are going to make it. And I rarely hear criticisms of the blockchain uh, projects out there. Um, and just hear the good stuff. Why you want to buy AVAX? Why you want to buy uh, Ethereum? So this video is going to tell you which ones I think will make it and which ones that I think will fail. And one of my top candidates for failure is AVAX. So the AVAX blockchain is, take a look at the market cap here. The market cap is $20 billion. And you get that by taking the price of the of the coin times the circulating supply. Now the fully diluted the fully diluted valuation is fifty five billion dollars, and that's take that's taken by taking the price times the the max supply. So this is a pretty expensive blockchain already. So if you look at it. You look at the market caps, you know, Ethereum is 364 billion, Bitcoin is 764 billion, and right here in the top 10 is, is Avalanche. It gets a lot of promotion. Everybody talks about it. But I, I'm a user of the Avalanche network, and based upon me using it for some time, I'm not impressed at all. And I really don't think that it's going to make it. And here's why. The gas fees are typically high. And while it's not running, it, there, there, there's one project on there. Uh, it's, it's a gaming project that typically clogs up the network. But it's only doing about maybe $1,200 worth of transactions in five minutes, which doesn't seem like a lot to... To clog up the network but they're using that as an excuse as to why the network fees are are so high but um one of its supposed benefits is that it's supposed to be substantially lower than ethereum but some of their fees have rivaled ethereum's um charging hundred dollars 150 dollars for a uh, for a transaction which is absolutely insane for something uh like like avax the network gets congested really easily so it only takes maybe like maybe under five thousand ten thousand dollars worth of transactions to go through and for a company that that has a market cap of over 20 billion dollars it just it, it it just doesn't add up it's just a copy of ethereum with the issues and the scalability it is not scalable um, under its current uh setup configuration they claim to be able to do over 4500 transactions per second tps my calculations show that it's only doing about 12 um, transactions per second and when it gets to 12 transactions per second the price spikes about 300 to 400 percent the fees the transaction fees which is you know not a big deal if you're just sending or receiving um, or swapping, but if you're doing DeFi transactions, uh, staking, unstaking, then those fees can really add up, and, and they can uh, be really expensive for those types of uh, of transactions. The best networks that I recommend, and and these are the ones that I that I've used, right? So there, there could be some others. Um, out there but these are the ones that i use and i can put my personal stamp on polygon is absolutely amazing and i'll, I'll give you an example you do one transaction on avax and it's probably going to cost you maybe 30 cents to a dollar okay which seems pretty cheap when you're looking at ethereum which can go from 60 dollars to 150 dollars but with polygon also known as formerly known as Matic Network, you can do 
4,000 transactions on Polygon for less than one penny. I'm going to say that again. You can do over 4,000 transactions on Polygon for less than a penny. So when you look at Polygon versus AVAX, the costs really add up quickly. Because you can be doing hundreds of dollars, even thousands of dollars worth of transactions on, on Avalanche just in fees, paying fees. Where Polygon, the fees are not even an issue. Uh, Solana has a similar structure where, you know, it's much less than a penny that you're paying for for, for, each, for each transaction. And then, um, you know, the Binance Smart Chain. You know, Binance Smart Chain gets a lot of flack and partially deservedly so because it's not a fully decentralized network. Um, it's partially centralized. Owned by the, you know, owned by and controlled by the Binance. So sometimes, you know, they go down for maintenance and things like that. But um, their fees are still relatively reasonable and and consistent. Although I will say that Binance Smart Chain, their fee structure is cl much closer to AVAX than it is to Polygon and Solana in terms of what what you'll pay. Typically, fees are thirty cents, forty cents, and things like that. Um, but you don't get the same level of congestion, and uh, I've never seen a hundred dollar fee on Binance Smart Chain ever. Um, and you see, and, and that happens a lot on on AVAX. So, what could save AVAX? Well, there's there's two things that I think could save AVAX. Number one is if they fix their network and scaling issues and that's possible um, although since they basically built AVAX which it's basically since it's a clone of the Ethereum network and Ethereum is now building a whole new network um, I don't see them being able to do it with their current network seems like they would have to totally blow the other one up and just create something totally new but if they're able to fix their scaling issues, uh, then that could that could do it. But I'm not seeing how they could do that with their current. Now, the thing that they have going for them is that there's a lot of money backing this project. And what I've learned over the years in crypto and, and trading in the traditional markets is that the best product does not always win. And I'll say that again. The best product does not always win. Many times it's a product that has the most financial backing behind it. And if you look at AVAX, it has a lot of money behind it. So they do have the power to uh, make adjustments and fix the network so that it is operating um, well. And I think that they would try to do that before they let the, pro the project fail. But where it's going right now on its current path, I don't see it making it being one of the blockchain projects that, uh, that goes forward. All right, guys. Hope you liked this video. Hope you found it helpful and useful. If you did, please give a like um, and a uh, subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace. My no last the death, and then you call me, and it's not so bad, it's not so bad, and I want to thank you for giving me the best day of my life. No, just to be with you, it's having the best day of my life.